and welcome to webinar series. My name is Ainava Majumdar. I'm an extension professor at, in the Department of Entomology, working with Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And today we're going to talk about sparrow mites because these have become major issues in row crops as well as specialty crops. So we'll very quickly discuss about sparrow mites. We have some resources for beginning farmers as well as experienced farmers. Uh, definitely the IPM communicator an e-newsletter is a great resource to stay in touch with us and know about pest alerts. What happened over the years? We have seen increasing cycles of drought and then periods of wet, heavy rainfall. For example, 2016, we had a very prolonged drought starting from September to the end of the year uh, at various locations as shown on this slide. And then we had 2017 and 2018 relatively rainy periods, followed by the flash drought in 2019. And by what we mean by flash drought is a sudden uh, stop in rainfall or precipitation, as we saw in the end of August and in September, almost uh, four to six weeks of no rainfall. And fl weather fluctuations like these can have tremendous impact on pest populations. And typically when the weather dries out like that with drought, whether it's a prolonged drought or a flash drought, caterpillars become a huge problem in specialty crops or row crops. And when producers are trying to control these insects with synthetic pyrethroids, many times those are a few sprays of those pyrethroids uh, can flare up spider mites really bad because they remove the beneficial mites. Typically we see the two spotted spider mites in the field, uh, very common. And here's a little video that shows them in motion. And uh, you can see when there's a webbing on the leaf like that, then it's definitely very late. Now, spider mites have a very quick life cycle. Depending on the weather, they do not like the wet weather. And they're typically induced by the hot, dry weather, as we have stated before, and also by overuse of pesticides. And if you're seeing webbed leaves, as we say, it's pretty late and the uh, damage has been done in many cases. We, we see the two spotted spider mite as the most common species, but we also see Russet mites on vegetables, and we also see this red spider, spot, red spider mites, uh, different species of uh, Tetronychus on peanuts uh, many times. And again, these are can be easily flared with synthetic pyrethroids. Here's some example of synthetic uh, pyrethroid use, especially in high tunnels where it's a year round dry season uh, when the exclusion of rainfall and it gets very hot, you can flare up spider mites with two to four applications of uh, synthetic pyrethroids. And the picture on the right shows the uh, effect of spider mites on, on peanuts. Uh, effectively, there's a complete burn down of the crop and you can have 30 to 50% crop loss in these cases. Here's another picture of the spider mites. And uh, this is from one of our experiments in Clanton, which saw a severe flash drought 2019. And you can tell the difference between the miticide treated rows versus the control. And these were flared up with just two applications of synthetic pyrethroids. And after spraying, for example, with product like comite, which is registered on peanuts, with just after uh, two applications, it makes a big difference on the number of uh, spider mites, especially the mobile stages of spider mites. And these pictures show the spider mite counts. And uh, uh, you can see the tremendous uh, reduction in spider mite populations with use of comite. Here's a uh, portal. Portal is a relatively newer miticide, has a very different mode of action, and again, does a good job as a rescue miticide uh, after one to two applications. 
and the, the difference is visible under the microscope. As I said before, caterpillar control is a major issue, especially flared by the drought. And when we uh, make a mistake with pyrethroid use in the season during the hot weather uh, for caterpillar control is when we trigger the, the spider mites. And this is just a hypothetical graph showing how we can lay out some of the treatments. I especially encourage producers to look into insect growth regulators which are selective softer insecticides, for example, Dimelin, Diamond, Intrepid. Uh, producers have to check the label and um, see if these products, insect growth regulators are available for use on those crops. But these are selective insecticides that can be used during that prolonged drought or the short season drought. And then uh, use synthetic pyrethroids later in the season when the danger of spider mite uh, induction is reduced. So space out your pyrethroid applications by rotating with different insecticides, the aim of this chart. Now some of the best IPM practices for spider mite management, there's some cultural tactics, for example, keep scouting very closely, especially close to harvest when crop damage and contamination can happen very quickly. Reduce movement of equipment and personnel from the spider mite hotspots because spider mites are very good hitchhikers. And reduce plant stress with timely irrigation, fertigation as needed. Uh, do everything that can help uh, the plant to fight back spider mite infestations. Dust particles also carry spider mites. So another cultural tactic would be to reduce mowing around the fields. You will typically see spider mite infestations start from the sides on the, on the outer borders or the field edges. So reduction of any uh, movement helps reduce spider mite, uh, spread of spider mites. With chemicals, there are selective miticides that you can use. Yeah, try to use selective insecticides for caterpillar control as we have indicated before. Uh, start the applications timely and monitor the effectiveness of these products. It doesn't matter whether you are a specialty crop producer or a row crop producer. It's very important to mark the location and going back to it after application of miticide to see its effectiveness. And then please check the Alabama Cooperative Extension System website for the new IPM guides. If you are a vegetable producer, look for the Southeast Vegetable Guide. If you're an organic producer, make sure you have the most recent IPM slide chart that are given at extension events and exhibitions. Overall, the goal should be to develop your own farm specific IPM plan for spider mite management. For more information, we have some excellent resources for our producers. We have the IPM newsletter that goes out every two weeks throughout the year. You can sign up yourself through the website, aces.edu slash IPM communicator. We also have a Farming Basics online course for beginning farmers. Last but not the least, the phone app called Farming Basics is available on Apple devices as well as Android devices. It's a great resource to not only look at the pictures and diagnosis on symptoms of of insect and disease, but also to stay in touch with the extension agent through the app. Thank you very much.